Welcome to Crystal Maker 10. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at volumetric data and investigate ways of changing the range of data, which is shown on the screen. Here I have a cubic crystal, and we're going to investigate simulating electron density for this uh, simple crystal. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the volume inspector and we're going to add a new volumetric data set and I can use that uh, by double clicking in the list and we're going to create an electron density map and I'm prompted to enter the parameters for my electron density map for the sake of illustration I'm going to enter a very low resolution here I click the OK button and we get an electron density map which initially is displayed as a lattice plane section. So as I rotate the model you can see a slice of the electron density in the crystal. I can take that lattice plane and using the lattice planes group which is also in the volume inspector I can move that through the structure and see how the electron density changes. Now the atoms are in the way so I'm going to hide my atoms and just focus on the volumetric data. To do that we'll go to the atoms inspector and we'll hide all of our atoms. Let's go back to the volume inspector and let's add a few more lattice planes. So I'm going to add an O1O plane and we'll have a 1O plane. Let's move the O1 plane back into the center of our plot and as we rotate we get a nice display. Now we can change the way in which our volumetric data are displayed by using the controls in the volumetric data group. So let's just tidy things up for a moment and we're going to hide these three lattice planes. Then we'll move down to the volumetric data group and we can see that we have a colouring scale and we have a type pop-up. And this lets us choose from different display modes. So one thing that you might want to do is to actually visualise the individual data points that are plotted on the screen. So we could display a point cloud as a gradient and there we can see the individual values and they're colour coded using this gradient scale. You can change the gradient scale by the way by choosing different scales from the pop-up. You can display a point cloud that has different sizes corresponding to different values. But many people like to display some kind of ISO surface or ISO volume. So let's choose the ISO surface option. Now this doesn't look like an ISO surface, it's actually an ISO volume and that's because the range of data to be displayed encompass every single data point on the screen. Now we can customize that range very easily using the controls in the volumetric data list. So if we move down here where we have our description of our data set we have a little button that says data range. So we'll click this button and we get a popover and the popover starts with a histogram at the top that shows the number of data points with a particular value with the uh, lowest values on the left and the highest values on the right. And you can see we have a, uh, a rainbow scale here which corresponds to the current colour gradient and we have a pair of uh, thumb controls and we can click and drag these thumbs to adjust the range of values that are displayed. So if I want to look at part of my data set I can narrow in the data range just by clicking and dragging with the thumbs. 
Now you can be a little bit more precise by using the controls underneath the slider. There is a range pop-up which lets you toggle between adjusting relative values as percentages of the overall data range or original raw values. So we might want to look at data between say 40% and 60% of our data range. Now what's quite nice is that you can use the little padlock here to lock that range interval. And then you can change the range by using these stepper controls and the minimum will change as well as the maximum. Or you can go to the scroller here and we can click and drag, it's actually a slider control and we can click and drag to investigate a fixed interval but with different starting and ending values. At the bottom we have some presets, so we can look at the median. Now notice that here we are visualizing an ISO surface, the minimum and maximum values are the same. So for the ISO surface we just have a single slider bar thumb which allows us to scroll all the way through the full data range and back. Finally I should note that we have the option of a fast redraw uh, so normally if you have fairly low resolution data Crystal Maker 10 can interpolate values it actually uses uh, uh, bicubic or tricubic interpolation to give you a nice smooth plot. That takes a bit of time so with the fast redraw uh, the program will use lower resolution whilst you're uh, adjusting the slider values and when the system is idle it will revert to the full high resolution display. The other option that you have uh, which isn't relevant here but you have the option of just plotting absolute values so that if you have negative values they'll be plotted as if they were positive. So here our ISO surface was plotted using uh, this gradient option which you can change. You have another option for ISO surfaces which is to use fixed colors. So instead of a gradient display, we have colors for the maximum data point, the minimum data point, and any kind of truncation of the data volume. So let's have a look at how this works. We'll go back to our data range popover, and we're going to switch to an ISO volume. Now you can see that the white area corresponds to the truncation color. The red area, which you can also see mirrored on this red slider bar thumb, corresponds to the maximum data points and the yellow corresponds to the minimum data value. And again, we can, uh, we can unlock this data range and we can make our ISO volume larger just by dragging the extent. Finally, uh, I should note that there is a little info button here which we can click and that displays you a bit of information about the number of data points in the structure, uh, whether or not we are using interpolation, that's this uh, oversampling value here, and the, uh, the range of data values. Of course, you can add multiple data sets to your uh, Crystal Maker document, you're not limited to one, and you're also not limited to just our calculated electron density. So we can add porosity maps, surface maps, distance maps that Crystal Maker will calculate, but many of you will have your own volumetric data that you'll want to add, and you can drag and drop uh, data files directly into this volumetric data group or you can use the actions button up here to import volumetric data from a wide range of formats that Crystal Maker supports and you can also export data to, uh, to different formats if you need to. We also have com uh, commands to duplicate uh, and combine data sets to add or subtract them.